Hi, this is Abdullah. I'm going to show you how I fixed up my crown preps in preclinic. I'm just going to retract this first just so you, can, you guys can have a better, clear vision of what we're going to do. I always start by putting some Vaseline around my gingiva. This kind of helps it in case your burr grazes it or affects it. Make sure you wipe all the excess before you start prepping on the tooth area. You just need a thin coating. Okay, so I usually try to start prepping by breaking the interproximal first. And I think the biggest problem that people have with breaking interproximal is applying too much force as they go in that they end up nicking the adjacent teeth or taking too much. Remember, the first groove is very important to just have kind of a very thin feather motion to create a guide for where your bird is going to go. And you want to use the adjacent teeth as a guide to the angulation. Use that as a guide for your tooth. Again, you're feathering and you start applying a little bit more pressure. So after you create this enamel shell, just go ahead, flick it off with your hatchet. And now you have a much higher margin, but you're gonna fix it up more at the end. And it now it looks a little bit wider, but as you go down more, the margin will decrease because the tooth also gets thinner, uh, closer to the gingiva. They break the other in approximate context mm -hmm. and then
as of right now we have a very rough shape to our outline for the crown prep and now we're going to try to create the lingual and the facial reduction the best way to reduce and know the angulation the total occlusal conversions for your crown prep place your burr against the adjacent teeth that's the angulation you want to hold it against the wall same thing on the lingual side that's the angulation and whenever you feel like you're over tapering or under tapering just keep looking at the adjacent teeth and keep mimicking that angulation and you'll have a very parallel wall some people like to create grooves to the depth of the burr grooves to the depth of the burr angulation After you create your initial grooves, I usually like to bring, when I started doing this, I would bring in a pencil and I would mark it. The next step is as you start reducing these walls, the moment the pencil disappears, that's when you know you're at the right depth. So at this point, most of the pencil marks disappeared, but you can see you still need to reduce more on this side. When you try to reduce from the interproximal, start from the top to the bottom, not this way. That's the way I, the reason I go that way because that lessens the risk of you nicking the adjacent tooth. So, because the burr is the thinnest from the tip, so I start exclusively and I climb down. You want to go the full length of
now as you're checking your prep, remember that the mandible is actually more in this, in that direction. It's not necessarily parallel. So your walls here are following that. And then you look at the lingual as well. Suction, and you start tracing your, um, you start tracing your finish line, make sure that everything is nice and continuous. Your bevel is in the right area and your reductions are also correct based on the design of the crown that you're doing. And in the final steps of the prep, after you've already done the, the green and the red burr, of course there are different types of burrs, but in most schools they just give you these two different uh, grits. You can actually switch to a slow speed and just round the edges and polish your prep. See, some people say you don't necessarily need to polish your prep and in clinics you probably don't, but for pre-clinic when you're trying to present the case or you're doing a practical, it takes a few seconds. You don't want to spend too much time on this, but it helps you also make sure that there are no sharp edges and that your prep is smooth all around. And when we're talking about anatomy, you don't want to create crazy anatomy. You just want to follow like there's a cusp, there's a groove, and there's a cusp, cusp, groove. So this is what they mean by anatomy. You don't need like this kind of anatomy on the adjacent teeth. You just need to make sure that there's uniform reduction all around for the material to go. at the end you see everything is still well maintained your gingiva is still in place the vaseline has really helped and you have nice reduction nice toc and a, a clean very nice looking prep it's almost as polished as the adjacent one again the polishing part that's not necessity uh that's just something that i always do as extra because you're in pre-clinic and might as well you're just learning um and that's what we have